All right. So this is a uh, power window assembly. I'm already saying, uh, and I just started the video. I'm trying not to do that in further videos. This is a 1989 Ford E350 power window regulator assembly. As far as I can tell, this must be like one of the only ones in existence because there is no such thing, no such creature in AutoZone or any kind of auto supply store. Uh, I could probably get one from a, a junkyard, pull apart those kinds of places. But finding this new or refurbished is proving to be a challenge. I took some photos of it. I might send it off to some forums and see if people can figure it out. But part of the reason why this may be an unusual configuration is because these were custom for the Econoline 350s for the Chinook camper van. So I took this out of my Chinook and I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, and then I'm going to pull the motor off and see if I could just replace the motor, which I've turned, determined to be dickered. All right, here's the beast. This is my 1989 Ford Chinook. And the passenger side door over here, which I've taken apart. Now, it's important to understand on these, a lot of videos will say that there are three rivets to remove. There are actually four, one under here, here and here, that need to be removed. Uh, in order to get the regulator off. And then once you take it off, you want to move it around and down around the slide here. I actually took the bolt out of the slide, but that didn't really make a difference. Uh, and then pull it up through here. There's not a lot of space to get that thing out of here. So uh, didn't really take a video of it, but it might have been video worthy. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do since I cannot find this assembly here, I've actually taken this out after taking it out. I plugged this back in, ran it a couple times to make sure that it wasn't anything to do with this slide and this crank moving. It has to do with this, I don't know what this is, worm drive or something, and then the motor itself. So this motor and this connector to this uh, gear mechanism I guess what you would call the regulator is part of the problem. So I'm going to take this off and see if I can uh, get a replacement part at AutoZone, which I think I can. It's in stock. I can get it today. So we'll see if this is a simpler fix than a complete replacement of everything here. All right, so there's a tensioner adjustment screw here. Not really sure what that does. The gear which it meshes with the actual assembly here, which seems to be 100% fine. So I'm gonna try to just replace this stuff here. I'm assuming these bolts go from this end all the way over to this here. Uh, so I could potentially take off this motor and just replace that motor. Let's see what I can find on AutoZone. All right, here we have what looks like a working replacement. This is plastic parts. I'm not necessarily a big fan of it, but it does seem to have the same three hole pattern. It has what looks like a number of harnesses. This is probably some kind of universal motor. So out of my own curiosity, I had to see what was underneath this gasket and it is uh, just packed full of gunk. And I mean, this is just pure shavings or debris, big, big chunks of stuff in there. That is not a gump, gunk of, of uh, lube, those are like literally chunks of something that either broke off and just got mangled. 
or is uh, uh, just debris that's entered into the gas tank, which seems extremely likely. So I think this thing is rightly dickered. All right, I'm just gonna keep rolling here this time, but I've removed this bit here, which looks like a, like a trilobe of some sort. And I'm just gonna take it apart even more and see how far I can tear this down, just out of my own curiosity. All right, so I'm in the middle of cleaning this thing here, and now I can kind of see the worm drive a bit, but there's a lot of gunk in there that I want to get, and I want to get out. So I think this is key to getting this stuff out in order to, to clean that and get it moving. All right, my kingdom for a spade terminal. Got some banana clips and a couple wires. I got this old hard drive so power supply, which is essentially a uh, AC to DC rectifier, runs at 12 volts, one and a half amps. I don't know if that's too much for this mortar, but I'm not going to blow it. Hopefully, I got a DC uh, center pin plug kind of disconnect here. So get in there. There we go. All right, and contact. Nothing. A little, a little jig there. I think I need a better, better connection. See if I can do that. And contact. Just thinking about it. Hmm. I'm starting to think that maybe the issue isn't that dickered gear, but actually the motors or something inside here. I may need to give it more juice too. But this is enough. Hey, you know what? All I need to do now that I got it pulsing is clean this sucker up. So that makes my life easier. All right, moment of truth here. Let's uh, press the little button right here. And, oh, it's happy. No problems there. All right, move the camera bay due to the bright Arizona sunshine here. But I've gone ahead and taken this apart, cleaned it, and put it back together. So let's just look at this now. So this gasket here is a piece of metal with a rubber coating on this side of it with a kind of flexible sealing bit there that connects to this bit here, which has this kind of trilobe on the bottom that goes into here. Now this here, moves around pretty freely, meaning there was probably something over here with the lobes that was really holding this in place that it is no longer doing so. Um, and that's what I just spent about 20 minutes fishing out of all that goo was that there. And then we have our final piece with the large gear on the back and then the trilobe in the center. Connected to a completely working and totally fine motor, as far as I can tell. If I could find this piece, that the piece that connects this piece to this piece, then I think I'm pretty good to go. So 
I'm gonna see what I can find. All right, so it turns out these must be the things that disintegrated inside here for whatever reason. Here is the sealing retaining pin or uh, retaining seal that goes in on the pin, and uh, this is very similar to what I have. All right, so I think I found a solution that'll work for now. I don't know. Oops, I don't think. This is the best, but I've essentially put three bolts inside there. And the idea behind these little gear plugs there is, it seems, is to reduce the amount of uh, thrashing that can occur on this part and by and, and the startup. And by putting metal parts in there, I'm probably gonna damage this plastic piece. But here's the thing, this plastic piece is pretty tough. It, survived while these little bushings disintegrated sorry gear plugs disintegrated and the this is better than me going and spending forty dollars on a replacement twenty dollars for the gear plug kits or anything like that and when this breaks I'll just do the kit then but this will probably last me for the lifetime of the vehicle I'd say so all I need to do now is pack grease in here and put it back together and I think I'm good to go. I'm going to test this out first before I pack it, uh, but I do believe it's going to run. Let's find out. All right. Looks like it's working. Or not. No problem. Comes around like so. Hmm. Hmm. This is where the ax kills me. All right, so this thing, when I took it apart, this spring here was positioned such that, well, like so. And the amount of tension required for this thing to go all the way over to where the motor is is insane and to get all the way over to the closed position is ridiculous it's to the point that i question whether it was either installed in the correct position or repaired in the correct position so if i take this spring off here and move it around like so then i can with some force, provide some tension and get that uh, to this position without too much problem. And then I can move it all the way to the closed position with a serious amount of force, but not a ton of, amount, a ton of force, but this is essentially slack at this point. So there's that option, or there's the high torque option. Which is the correct one? I don't know. I don't want to over torque the motor, but considering that the plastic bushings like disintegrated, I wonder if the reason was because it was under insane constant load. Now, when the, when the window is completely up, then this would be over here. And when the window is completely down, it would be over here. You get the idea, over here. Now, it seems to me like most of the time you'd want no tension whatsoever when the window is up, and it would be okay to have mild tension when the window is down. So let's see if that is the correct way of doing things. Who knows? Sure makes it easier to put together, because I could just put it right over here in this position.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out, see what happens. rubbing against something perhaps, so one of these bolts maybe, or it's just not tight enough, which I haven't fully tightened it down yet, so that might be part of the problem, but it's definitely working. Clean this bottom track out inside here, and I'm just going to add a little bit of lubricant there to help it move, hopefully, and I'll just kind of turn that on and off. Alright, so my theory about the spring tension turned out to be correct. When this, as you can see, this is the original plastic that came with the vehicle with a hole for the speaker uh, over here in the, in the bottom. And this was essentially installed incorrectly. And that was the reason why those gear plugs dis disintegrated in the first place is because that spring tension was ridiculously high. When we attempted to move the window down on our own, we could only get it about halfway with the motor on and pushing down. We could move it down a little bit, but not a lot. And that reason was because the spring tension was so ridiculous. I just don't understand if this ever worked from the factory because unless, unless they got an OEM replacement piece of plastic, which seems a bit unlikely, uh, the, the spring tension was completely off. So by moving this spring into the correct place and removing the debris and putting a few bolts in there, I was able to fix it. The last thing about this is using those bolts is not the greatest idea, but it gets the job done. The reason those bolts exist is that motor is fine, even though it had so much force put on it. And the reason for that is because those gear plugs kept the motor safe from over torquing and burning itself out. So the by putting those nuts in, it is possible that I could burn out the motor. But the thing is, is the replacement motor is cheap, the gear parts are cheap, but this solution is free. So when I do need to fix it, I can use the actual replacement parts um, instead of using some nuts I had lying around instead. Also, I'm using these bolts with Loctite on them, and while the factory comes with rivets as an option, this bolt option is how they used to do things, and it could vibrate out over time, but I'll just retighten them. The rivets would be possibly a better option because they won't vibrate out, but I don't have a quarter inch heavy duty rivet gun with with uh, brass stems. So I'm just gonna use these, you know, two bucks worth of bolts from Ace Hardware, and I think it'll do okay. All right, so I've assembled the most of the door panel here. I have not put on the wood trim, and the pocket, which you see right there, the wood trim out there, uh, because I'm currently finishing that over the week. I unfortunately had some of the tint rip off as well. And over here, this big triangle. So that's a little bummer. I'll have to redo the tint sometime. But we have working windows, no problems. Working great. All right, thanks for watching.